So this is going to be a very unique uh, sort of experience. What we are going to do is uh, a couple of things. So let me see if you can see my slide. Okay, yeah, y'all can see my slide. Um, <clears throat> I have with me here Peter, who Peter and I have known each other since at least 2013. I think so, yeah. 2013, 2014. Yeah, yeah 2013, 14. Peter and I actually ran a writing company together. Like we had a writing agency. Um, and so Peter's been a, a, you could even call him like a writing partner of mine for going on five years now. Uh, he and I have shared a lot of similar client experiences. Like we've actually had the same client at times. Uh, we have been through the grinder. <laughs> we have uh, tried just about every strategy, tactic, uh, system. I've bought all the courses that there ever have, <laughs> has been made. Uh, we've tried everything. Uh, and we have both survived and thrived at the six figure level for those five years. What we're going to be doing today is a lot of times you come onto these workshops and these webinars and it's the dude telling you some perfect secret system. And if you know the perfect secret system, then everything's dandy and nothing ever hurts and it's all blah, blah, blah and all that kind of good stuff. Um, oftentimes they give you the overcomplicated stuff. Oftentimes they just want to impress you and wow you and tell you there's a secret. And if you don't know the secret, you're not going to be successful. Uh, so buy their stuff. What we're doing today is this is a half celebration half um, cranky writers just wanting to tell the truth and vent for a little bit, um, half we want to set the tone right for 2019. So in terms of celebration, this is the, the, the reason we're even holding this workshop is because Happy Writer, one of our programs, uh, teaches you how to be a blog post writer, earn $200 to $400 per blog post. Uh, that is... That program is coming off the shelf Friday night at midnight. So Friday night at midnight is the last time you will ever be able to purchase that program as a standalone. Uh, it's currently about $500. There's a $200 payment plan. It is, uh, it's the last time we'll ever offer it. It's likely also the last time we will ever offer anything for $500 ever again as well. Um, it is not going away. It's going to be merged into one of our bigger programs, which is a $4,000 program. Then you have to pay $300 a month. Uh, the shift that we're making in the No Pants Project is we want to be a lot more hands-on in the success of our students rather than, you know, uh, here's a, a training program and, you know, off you go. So we're shifting more towards uh, those types of programs. This is the very last time Happy Writer will ever be for sale. And that's not a gimmick. That's not a, you know, aha, in three months, we're going to secretly pull it out of the closet and whatever. No, it, it's gone uh, by Friday night. And so we are holding this workshop to raise awareness for that, to, you know, obviously sell that as many of those as we possibly can for the very last time. Uh, but also, uh, just to celebrate, uh, that program has brought a lot of wins to a lot of people, and we'll share some of those wins with you guys later. Um, but we also want to sort of put it in context in terms of where does something like blog post writing, whether you buy the program or not, where does it fall into this world of becoming a successful writer? So what Peter and I are going to do today is we're going to have some back and forth. I've got some questions here. Lots of different questions. We're likely not going to get to all of them. I want to try something that we've never tried before. And instead of holding your questions until the end of the workshop, I want you to ask your questions as they come up. Now, there are two places to ask questions. I'll only be able to look at one of those places. The first place is the chat function. So many of you have already used the chat function. Um, so for example, I see Anna and Holly and Melinda um, uh, and, and, I never, and Jennifer and Deidre and Allison and Anna, you've all asked your questions here in the, or you've all uh, typed in the chat. There's a separate box, which is uh, a question box. It should say Q and A. You should see it somewhere on your screen. If you have a question about anything that Peter and I are talking about or about Happy Writer or anything like that, 
uh, please post it in the q and A. I'm not guaranteed to get to it very quickly, but we want this to be a little bit more interactive. We want this to feel more like a seminar where we're all in a room together rather than just a presentation where we're blabbing on for you know however long we end up doing this, okay? So if you have questions as we go through about what it actually takes to be a six-figure writer, please pop those in the Q&A. If it comes up in chat, I'm likely not going to uh, be able to answer those. Uh, and then we'll go through Q&A. If you do have questions specific to Happy Writer, I will get to those at the end. I wanna make sure we focus on content first and Q&A for um, Happy Writer at the end. Plus we have some a bonus announcements that we're going to be announcing. Uh, some really cool stuff uh, that's related to Happy Writer. For those of you who purchased it recently are going to purchase it before Friday. And those of you who may have purchased it a long, long time ago. And of course, everybody who's in our Triple Point program basically just gets everything we ever do with writing. So you guys get that as well. Okay. That's enough of the, the announcements. Let's get to the good stuff. So, Peter. Yes. Do I need more introduction for you? Peter makes a lot of money writing. He doesn't work nearly as much as you think he does. He goes sailing all the time. And I'm very envious of a lot, a lot of the client contracts that he has, which is why he's on here, because we're going to grill him about some of that stuff. Okay. That's, That's basically so you, you shoot and uh, we'll cover the yeah. other introductions <laughs> necessary as we go. When I met Peter, he was doing photography uh, blog posts on Upwork or Elance, whatever it was, uh, mostly for side money. And, uh, and now he makes a crazy amount of money as a writer. So we'll talk about that process. Okay, first and foremost, I want to ask you, Peter. <clears throat> If you were to start all over again from scratch, let's say that you lost everything. It's 2019, and the only thing you can take with you is what you know now about the industry and about writing professionally. If you had to start all over again from scratch as a writer, where would you start? What would you do? What niches would you select? Who would you write for? Where would you get clients? And kind of help walk us through what you would do to go from starting to regain the, basically your current financial situation. And then we'll sort of break it down and I'll ask you questions about all that. Sure, so there are, uh, this is a, it's a very packed question. <laughs> there are a lot of places I could go with this. <laughs> um, but if I had to start all over again from the very beginning, and this is a common question that a lot of people ask, right? the thing that I would do is before I even chose anything that people like any, anything like, so if I'm going to say, okay, do I be a copywriter, a blog post writer? Do I write books? Do I write, you know, do I write anything? Mm -hmm. What I'm going to ask first before anything else is where is the demand in the marketplace for what I can provide and where my passions are? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what I'm going to think about first, before anything else, with all the knowledge that I have, is I'm going to say, okay, what interests me the most? What things am I, what things am I passionate about that I can go out there and share with the world? And then I'm going to look for other people out there in the world who have audiences that want to hear that sort of thing, right? Now, as far as what to do, all right, am I going to be an email copywriter? Am I going to be a blog post writer? Am I going to write sales copy, which are words that sell stuff, which is, you know, a lot of what you and I do right now. As far as that, I'm probably going to start with blog writing. Because when you go to write sales copy for someone, when you go to, even if you wanted to, I mean, any other type of writing, if you want to go, say, ghost write a book for someone, right? I would take copywriting out of it. What people are going to want to see is they're going to want to see proof that you can actually do it, right? With blog post writing, I feel like you don't need that same burden of proof to show your client because the risk that they're going to take to hire you, even if they're paying $200, $300, $400 dollars a blog post, the risk that they're, they're taking to hire you is very low from their perspective, number one. And number two, I believe a lot of clients know that if you're someone who is passionate about a topic, passionate about researching it, about understanding it, about approaching it in a way that their audience would understand, this is the audience of the person hiring you to write the blog post, 
I feel like they are willing to say, okay, that matters more in my mind than anything else. Does that make sense to you? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I, I feel like a lot of people hire blog post writers, and I'm thinking this is the perspective of a client right now, or a lot of people hire writers in general. And what they get when they hire a writer is oftentimes either uninspired words, so words that have no, they have no enthusiasm behind them, or mm-hmm. words that do not speak to their audience and empathize with the situation that their audience is in. Right. And I feel like when you go to hire a writer, if you can hire someone who is excited about a topic versus someone who is even experienced, but not excited about a topic, you're going to hire the person that's excited. I mean, is that how you feel about it too? Oh, a hundred percent. And I think, you know, uh, speaking about the passion piece, it, so one of the issues with being a professional writer Versus what I think a lot of people when they first sort of discover commercial writing, they maybe have done writing for fun in the past. Typically when they do writing for fun in the past, they do it when they feel like it or they do it sporadically. When you're a professional, especially if you want to get to the six figure level, it's about being a professional. It's about showing up, turning things in on time. Like how many clients have you and I had where we beat out other writers just because we could turn stuff in on time. Oh, like, that's 100% true. We weren't true. even better. We just could turn yeah, stuff no, in No, and on. I say that to writers too all the time is, uh, I mean, there's the passion piece, right? And you can have yeah. passion at other levels. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, um, you know, I'm relying on that passion to get hired first off. Yeah. And, you know, that's number one. And it's great because you can use that. You don't even have to have a pitch, right? You just yeah. say, like I, you, one of the ways I started is I wrote articles about photography and I got paid really well to write blog posts about photography. I was very passionate about photography, right? And the reason that I chose that to go into is because it's something I knew a lot about. It's something I know I could come up with fresh ideas about, something I could write about. And one of the benefits is I thought it would be cool if I could be one of those review writers that they send expensive equipment to, you Mm -hmm. know, and you could write about this $10,000 camera lens. And I actually got to the point where that was the case. It was pretty cool. They would rent a camera lens that cost $10,000. They'd send it to me in the mail and they'd say, Hey, review this however you'd like. Right. And that's a dream. That's an absolute dream. But the reason that I got hired is not because I'm a great writer and I'm really not the best writer in the world. Right. It's not because I was a great writer. It's, it's because I was passionate about that. And then the reason that I kept the job is because I turn things in on time. And I tell writers that all the time. I say like, look, the only battle is like, if you were a client and you were looking at, at what writers, you know, what, what are your needs, right? You're on a deadline. You need things uh, predictably. You're busy, right? So I'd say passion gets you the job often or just an interest even. And it doesn't even have to be a passion for the specific topic, which we can get more into. Um, I don't know how much you want to talk about it, but uh, what keeps you going is, is the consistency, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say part of that consistency, I think comes from how interested you are in what it is that you're writing. Oh, I agree. Yeah. 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 Go for it. Yeah. I was going to say one of the things that drives me, is I'm an inquisitive person, right? So I, under, I like to understand how things work. I like to research things and understand the perspectives on them. Uh, to give you an example, yesterday, one of my friends was uh, talking about, uh, he wanted to raise pigs. And the reason he wants to raise pigs, and this is gonna sound to everybody listening, this is gonna sound completely crazy uh, to start, <laughs> but I'm gonna relate this interest in pigs to writing blog posts. But just to give you an example, he wanted to raise pigs and he was talking about it on Facebook because he wanted to stick it to the village that he lives in because they wouldn't let him have horses, but they'd let him have pigs. So he was going to go out and he was going to buy 100 pigs. And he wanted to know if anybody would like to buy a couple pigs, you know, and go in with him and then he would raise your pigs for you and then, you know, whatever. Um, and I made a joke and I said, yes, but I only eat vegan pigs. Um, on his Facebook post and, you know, pigs that only eat, eat, um, they only eat a vegan diet. And I was just joking with him um, about it. 
And, uh, you know, I know that can be a little bit of a charge topic, but, but whatever. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, and then he's like, are you serious? And so I spent in my free time, I spent like 90 minutes of my day researching what pigs eat, right? So what pigs eat, what you'd put in a pig diet to find out if I could just feed a pig a vegan diet, <laughs> yeah. right? But, but in that excites me, right? So it's that inquisitiveness about the world. And in, in that's, that's a passion in and of itself. And I, I believe a lot of people are like that, you know? And I think if a lot of people, you know, if you like to read, right? Uh, it, and it could be reading anything. Like I like to read nonfiction, you know? And it, it's not related to writing often. It's, it could be related to a completely crazy topic, right? I have a book um, on my desk right now called The Road to Reality by Roger Penrose, which is like, it's a pop book, a pop science book that explains physics to lay people and calculus and math. I yeah. just, I, I don't like math at all, but yeah. I'm inquisitive about the way things work. Like, why does the world work? If you can apply that in a way, I think blog post writing is an excellent way to apply that, right? And that's really, you know, that's what got me into it. And then you find that um, when you're able to do that, work doesn't seem like work. Right. And I'm not, I'm not saying you have to have that inquisitiveness, right? You it up, could be something yeah. else. You bring up a really, really good point. I think a lot of people, when they first start out writing, and I think there's probably a lot of people listening to this right now. We've got about 150 people on here. I'm sure somebody can relate to this. When you first start out writing and you know, you've got Mike Shreve and the No Pants Project telling you $400 a blog post is no big deal. We have people in, 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 in our programs who are getting $500 a blog post, $1,000 a blog post, and you're out there struggling getting 50 bucks, 25 bucks. I started out, what, what got me off of being homeless was $5 articles on iWriter, yeah, right? Was, where iWriter took a dollar and, and it was 500 words. I was what there. I, yeah, what I've found is what helped me transition into the six figure level income, regardless of whether it was copywriting or blog post writing or anything, was exactly what you're talking about, was the transition as a writer from surface level writing, just trying to bang stuff out, mm -hmm. to writing deeper. So yeah. as a copywriter, instead of just following like a headline formula and ripping someone's sales letter to I'm going to take some time and research what it is I'm selling blog post writing. Instead of just trying to bang this out in 20 minutes, let me do some research. Let me dive deep. And the piece of content that I make that the client buys from me is that is it's about depth rather than uh, surface level. And to give you guys an example of the market forces at play that not only support this idea, but are actually, I think in 2019 and beyond, if you're a surface level writer and you just think you can sit down to a, a, a piece of paper and just whatever comes to your mind and that's what's going to work in the market, BuzzFeed and Huffington Post just laid off a ton of writers. Why did they do that? Have you seen a Huffington Post article? Have you seen a, a BuzzFeed article? It's yeah, there's, surface There's level. memes for it. We make jokes it, yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. They, they call it click, a BuzzFeed click, but like, it's not it's a that, specific type of clickbait. Yeah. yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not that writing is becoming less popular on the internet. It's that people are getting tired of BuzzFeed style clickbait, where it's this huge promise in the headline. You click on it, and then it's like this complete waste of time. Where or like Huffington Post, where they would do things where it's like thirty-seven images of whatever, whatever, and they click on it. And then you have to click the button. It's like one image at a time. It's like top 20 towns to live in or whatever. And you have to click one image at a time, one image at a time, one image at a time. And there's like ads hitting you. And it's like, ah, there's a reason those companies are struggling right now. We can, we can talk about the business model. And actually Peter and I were, we had, we shared a client, we won't say their name, but Peter and I shared a client where their model was similar to Buzzfeed in that it was traffic arb arbitration. Basically, they use content to get clicks and then they sold clicks, not necessarily click throughs to advertising. Um, and that client also shut down. And Peter and I shared that client for some time. We weren't involved in the writing of that side. We were in a different side of that particular business. But that business model is dying because people are getting sick of it. What is succeeding now more than ever is the kind of stuff that 
Peter is talking about. It's the in-depth, it's the well-researched, it's, the, it's the, the content that has substance and sustenance. It's the, P, it's the article where someone, so there's this concept, and I can't remember what it's called, but there's a concept where people share things online not to be altruistic, but people share things online to say something about themselves. So when you write a piece of content and it's in depth and it has, uh, you know, actual helpful tips and tricks and whatever for whoever you're writing for, when someone shares that, they're not just sharing it to be like, I'm trying to help my friends. They want to get the clout of, look at this cool thing that I found. See what this says about me now that I'm sharing this. I can't remember what it's called. It's like this um, psychological thing. Uh, but keeping that in mind as a writer, that's the shift you make from barely surviving on $5 articles to I'm getting paid 500 to a thousand dollars for an article because that's the content that rises to the top. That's the actual stuff that when you're talking about real dollars and cents, meaning a client is willing to pay you money and lots of it in exchange for an asset, which is what you'd be creating, whether it's a blog or email or copy, whatever, that's the kind of stuff they want. They want to be able to take what you wrote and use it as a tool, not just this mindless BuzzFeed Huffington Post, you know, those are tricks and tricks always die. Tricks always die. You have to look at the principles and the sort of base. Why are people reading? What do people want from that experience? Um, so that's definitely an excellent point there. Yeah, this is, this is exactly why I say I would start as, I mean, I would start with that researched content, right? Because that's, when you think about what people read too, uh, the average person has to read tens and tens of thousands of words per day, even if they never pick up a book. Yeah. There's this, yeah. uh, people consume content they find valuable and content that speaks to them. They consume it like crazy. It's the reason why, you know, newspapers and magazines you know, used to be so popular. Now they've been replaced by, you know, content that you just sit on your smartphone. It's two o'clock in the morning and you can't sleep, but you're on your smartphone reading articles, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so Jennifer, Jennifer asks, do you mean pieces where you offer personal insights about your own experience or something else? Not necessarily. Um, yeah. Yeah. Do you want to do your breakdown now, Peter? I mean, we're kind of on it. Yeah, we can talk about we can talk about what these look like. Um, so, what does high quality content look like? Uh, just for everybody listening, one of the things that I do for clients, and then um, you know, oftentimes with people that I'm speaking to about how do you become a writer, one of the things that I do is I break down what makes things successful and what makes things work. Um, so, if we want to do that right now, we can do that and just talk about what some of these deeper pieces look like and how they work and why they work on the audience that they're written uh, for. Yeah. Yeah. Do you guys want to see that right now? You want to see Peter break down some basically I mean, it's, what a, it's really what up to everybody what listening. article looks like and kind of how you would create it and stuff like that. You guys want to see that? Um, yeah, let's do that then. I, okay. I yeah. Lots of, yeah lots, of lots of yeses. Let's go ahead and do that now. Yeah. Sure. So, um, I mean, there are a couple here. Let me see if I can share my share my tab. Um, let me see. Okay. There are lots of examples here. And the first one I think I'm going to start with is, uh, this is a, what I consider a classic advertorial. And this is an example of how research in the deep dive into explaining something that I was talking about and telling the story of it. And this is not, this is not from a, um, it's not even from a personal perspective right? It's not even mm -hmm. like, this is my story. This mm -hmm. is the writer of this piece researched some weird thing, right? And it just, this corn, right? Which I said I was going to talk about <laughs> at the beginning, which <laughs> thing, it sounds weird. And they put it up as a, as a type of blog post that works as an advertorial or a native advertisement that actually um, it tries to sell seeds for this type of corn. And I haven't looked at this in a long time. So this morning I was looking for examples to kind of do this. Um, this was originally published in 2002 and then they republish it and they keep republishing it and they tell you. Um, One second. One second. Yeah. You guys listen to what he just said. It they was 2012. It in 2012. 2000, whatever. And then they republished it. That's yeah. what clients are looking to pay for. 
So something that is ever, it's called evergreen. And that basically means <clears throat> clients want to pay you the money and they'll pay you a lot of money. Somebody asked uh, just a second ago, how do we do this without working 60 hours a week? The answer is pricing. And we'll talk about pricing here in a second. But one of the ways you can increase your price is to make something that a client could rehash and reuse and recycle because then it becomes a long-term asset. Okay, sorry for interrupting. I just want to point that out. That's really cool. Yep. So this is Business Insider. And now Business Insider, I don't know how much they paid for this, right? But this is, in my mind, a piece that you would pay uh, a writer anywhere from you know $200 to even $1,000 to write or maybe more. And uh, let me show you why. Um, first, it's the story, right? So back in 2012, this story of this um, glass gem corn, right, um, in, in this uh, farmer, Carl Barnes, kind of took off and became this public sensation. And it was a big thing in the news. So people already knew about it. And then in 2013, this uh, writer went in, the original writer went and wrote this based off this public sensation. They put it up on Business Insider. Um, and they told the story of this. Uh, so the number one reason why I think, think this works so well is because it's, it's like, um, it's storytelling, right? And everybody is drawn into a story. Everyone, I think everyone really at their core, I mean, there's a reason why people watch movies, right? There's a reason why people get sucked into TV shows. There's a reason why people read. It's where I think we're, we're uh, attracted to story at heart. Right. Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. starts with the story of this. But what I find most interesting about this piece is how few words are here. Yes. It's all images. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and, you know, the writer, basically, the writer of this just found these images. Yeah. And I mean, you could do this and they just explained what's in the image. Yeah. Right. And it goes and it goes and it goes. Now, what you'll find here, what Business Insider has done is along the way, They've monetized this in a few ways, which I think is another important part of writing blog posts that uh, clients want to pay mm -hmm. you know, 200, 300, 400, 500, yeah. 600 dollars for is the question of how are they monetizing the blog post? And they have this monetized in an old fashioned way, which I can differentiate between the two in just a minute. But that's a question I'm asking myself too. So it's not just the nature of the content. It's how is the client that you have or how is the person who needs the content using the content to achieve an objective for their business, right? Mm -hmm. In this case, Business Insider is using it to make money by putting display advertisements on it right here, mm -hmm. like sign up for the Wall Street Journal or um, you know, freestyle, finally eat what you love and lose weight. And people click on these. And this is kind of a dying advertising model, uh, mm -hmm. which we can, we can talk more about. But um, they also have links to go and buy the seeds, right? Mm -hmm. And this is, I'm sure this works. And I'm sure it makes the business insider, it's made the business insider, the 500 or 600 or however many dollars they paid for this originally. Mm -hmm. It's likely made them that money back over and over again. And I think when they, when they first published this and first said, hey, can you write this in 2013? Or when someone said, hey, I'd like you to write, you know, here's a blog post you could, you could do. Uh, I'm sure they knew it would keep paying for itself over and over again. Yeah, right? so let me, let me talk about that really quick because this is so important. This is so important, you guys. Understanding the objective of the piece of content that you write, whether that piece of content is meant to sell something directly or it's meant to get people to sign up for something or it's meant whatever that is in the happy writer program. We go in depth in that, um, in two different ways. One, there's an entire bonus program called how to be a content director within happy writer, which goes in depth about content strategies, but then also in our templates, you have to ask yourself before you sit down to write this stuff, how do I, uh, what's, what's the reason that this piece of content exists? Because if you listen to what Peter said, Peter said Business Insider very likely got back their 500 or whatever they paid for this blog post. You have to understand, see, here's the, here's the big struggle that writers have. And, and um, I can't remember who told this to me. I don't know if I just even made it up. I don't, I'm not totally <laughs> sure. I can't remember. But the creative mind and the business mind are not the same mind. So when you look at a piece of content and you're like, I'm going to write the best piece of content that I can possibly write. 
you have to also take a moment to say, okay, I got that piece down. Now let me take a look at what the business objectives are. And if you are a business owner, and this is me as a business owner, right now we have a stable of writers who write for the No Pants Project. What I want when I pay a writer for a piece of content is if I pay a writer $200 and from that piece of content, I can, I can make $250. So only making a $50 profit, I will pay that $200 as many times as I possibly can. As many times as I possibly can. Because if it makes me even just a tiny little bit of profit, I'm going to invest in that. So when, when you go out and you start pricing your projects, it, it's not about how good is your content. That has nothing to do with price. That's where the creative mind hangs up the business mind. The business mind has to look at what is the value that this piece of content brings and how is it affecting the business owner? Are they getting a positive ROI? In The Happy Writer, we go way in depth in that because way too much for us to talk about here. I mean, we would have to spend several hours talking about it as we do in the program. <laughs> but someone asked, uh, uh, Kenda says, I love this deep dive approach for most things in life, but it takes an investment in time. How do you balance the time it takes to deep dive and still maintain a reasonable wage per blog post? So one of that, one of those ways that you do that is exactly what we're talking about here is understanding the business, uh, basically goals for the piece of content, making sure that you achieve those goals within the piece of content. And then the second thing is I don't want to, I don't want us to get confused here. I'm not saying go spend 10 hours of research on a piece of content. What I'm saying is find one, maybe two good ideas and then how you structure that piece of content is to support those one or two good ideas. If you look at what Peter just shared with you here, this, is, this did not take a long time to assemble. Yeah, if you look at this, and a great point on this, just to follow up on what you just said, if you actually read it, it says right here, the history was largely told by Barnes' protege, Greg, right? And we've broken out the highlights. So you know that the, the impetus for writing this like yeah. was this author of this piece, the writer of this piece, or even the ghost writer, I don't know if this is the person who wrote it or not or whatever. Mm -hmm. They were reading something that they personally found interesting. They came across something in just their everyday life. It could have been a newspaper article. It could have been something they saw flash by a social feed. And yeah. they said, I want to learn more about this. And they took time in their own life to learn more about it, maybe just reading a single article. And they said, wow, I can write about this. And this person here, Barnes' protege, Greg, he had already done all the legwork. Mm -hmm. And all this author did was pull out the highlights and then apply a purpose to it, mm -hmm. right? Which is, here's a link where you can get the seeds and here's all the cool stuff you can do yeah. with them. Which, by the way, guys, in Happy Writer, we have a template for this kind of breakdown. So, I mean, total time invested here. Uh, what are we talking about, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. it, it can't be that it, it can't be that extensive. I know yeah, um, maybe just two and a half hours. Yeah. Just to give people an example. <laughs> um, one client I, I work with on a regular basis, I write, uh, they are not blog posts like this. Um, so this is a very, um, I, I call this a very like a lighthearted advertorial, right? It doesn't push people to do something. Yeah. It, it's, it has an action to it, but it's not really pushing people too far right? It's more informative than it is salesy, which mm -hmm. you know, I typically write from a more sales oriented approach for the clients I have because our goals are very specific behind what we need people to do. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the action we'd like them to take after they read the content is very specific. And that's what we need them to do. And that's the goal of my client. As you said, you have to understand their goals um, is to get them to buy something. But I wrote a post uh, yesterday, actually, or Monday, uh, for that client. And it was about, it was in the fitness uh, vertical and it was about how a certain exercise style uh, helps protect your cells or keeps your cells from aging. It stops cellular aging. And the target market was people who are, you know, 50, 60 plus who are looking to get into exercise. The way I found that is I, in, in the research, the deep dive that went into doing that was basically a, um, it was a little article that I read on an, that I would have normally read anyway. 
in an online publication, like one of those newspaper publications. It could have been the Washington Post. It could have been the New York Times, whatever. I was looking at on, online and I saw it and I'm like, hmm, that's an interesting study that just came out. And so then I went and I read the study and I said, that could be a blog post for my client. Let me look at the study. And then all I did was I pulled quotes out of the study that the doctor who ran the study said. So the doctor who ran the study actually said, if people could pick just one workout style, this is it because of these reasons. I pulled those quotes out. I made them headlines. I talked about where the study was, what it found. And then I talked about how it applied or how it could be applied or how it proved that the workouts my clients teach people are, you know, the same thing basically mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. typed it all up. The total process took maybe two or three hours. Yeah. Right? But that is a blog post that they can put up. They can run for years. Mm -hmm. Right. And it will, it will generate sale after sale after sale for their business. Or if it doesn't generate sales, it will generate interest, which can then turn into a return on investment for the amount of money they paid me for. Yeah. yeah. But as far as the research process, it took, you know, it didn't take long at all. Right. Yeah. Because in a lot of cases, it's already there. It just needs to be reworded or presented in a way that people want to see it or in a way that people can connect with it. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, um, uh, we got a few people uh, earlier. I mentioned it doesn't matter how good it is. That's not what's important. Um, and a couple of people are, I think I didn't explain that very, cl very clearly. And I want to sort of follow up on that. Yeah. Um, so when I say it, do it doesn't matter how good the content is, as writers, we get hung up on a lot of things that are not, uh, not related to the end goal of the piece of content that we're writing. So when I say it doesn't have to be good, what I'm talking about here is efficiency. Um, is your piece of content efficient in delivering the goal for which it has been commissioned, right? So for example, one way that you can tell the difference between a writer who's focusing too much on, is this a good piece of content versus a writer who's focusing on, is this an efficient piece of content is uh, read through rates. So writers who focus too much on, uh, the elegance of the sentence and I agree with this totally. Yeah. The et cetera and et cetera. They have really poor read through rates in, in the, in the, in the space that we're talking about. Now, this is not talking about fiction. We're not talking about, you know, other types of writing. We're specifically talking about professional commercial writing. Efficiency is the goal and the efficiency isn't even efficiency of delivering the message. It's, efficiency of moving a reader to the end goal of what the client is hoping to achieve with that piece of content. So somebody says, um, she does, she says, Hmm, I disagree at the high end. I'm getting paid a thousand dollars per blog post precisely because B2B thought leadership requires high quality to represent the company or CEO brand. I know from their CEO, that they fired other writers because the quality of writing wasn't there. Skills matter. So should I be charging even more for that? So let's break that down because the CEO that fired other writers because the quality of writing wasn't there. This is where writers get in trouble. Quality is subjective, meaning your client is going to determine what quality means. Therefore, the goal of every writer, whether you are a copywriter or a blog post writer, is to intimately understand what is the goal of my client? And then to produce content or copy or whatever it is based off the goal of the client, not based off of an arbitrary, like, you know, I went to a writing conference and this guy did a five hour, whatever on this piece of random. It's about efficient movement of a reader towards the goal of whatever it is that you're doing. So, um, I don't want anyone to think that I'm saying skills don't matter. Skills are very important, but it's the skill of efficient writing, meaning the skill of writing for a purpose that is important. Now for Patty specifically, she says that she's charging a thousand dollars per blog post. So you guys, I'm not making this stuff up. Happy writer is like 200 to 400 and people are like, that's impossible. 
People get paid a thousand dollars in blog posts all the time, but she says, so should I be charging even more for that? Patty, here's the rule of thumb. If you are getting a thousand dollars per blog post easily and people are saying yes to that regularly, then yeah, you need to be charging more. You need to charge enough that clients have to think about it for a second before they lay down the money. That's the sort of ceiling uh, for where you charge. Anyways, total side note, but I wanted to make sure we were clear on that because I don't want people thinking that, well, Mike Shreve says I could go out and create drivel. No, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you've clarified that very well. I, okay, I really do good. because yeah, I, if you, um, have you wanted to add there, Peter, it's really, really important because I want to make well, sure that we're not leading what, people astray. Right. What, what the skills, writing skills do matter, right? So you need to know how to construct effective how to construct language so that it's effective and people can understand what you're saying and the main skill the skill that matters the most though is understanding what your client needs right and what their purpose behind the words that you have are i often tell copywriters and even blog post writers what i see in their copy sometimes is they try to get they try to write like they're in creative writing 101 or they try to write like they're an mfa student Mm -hmm. Instead of writing like, you know, uh, in, instead of writing something that the audience wants to read, mm -hmm. right? So there are situations where your language can be, you know, where you're using all those rules of, of creative writing, right? And you're trying to use imagery to convey feelings and emotions, right? Where you're using, um, you know, assonance and consonants to make the, the, the you, you, there are situations mm -hmm. where clients want that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that that's the purpose that they have. But in a lot of cases, uh, you become more clear about what you're conveying to the audience and you tell a better message when you just keep it simple. Yeah. So w when I think of skills mattering, I, I believe that people do not need to be uh, highly trained writers from the standpoint of what and you know, a doctoral level, a master, an MFA, whatever the terminal level mm -hmm. is of creative writing, what they consider to be good writing. Yeah. Right. It, it doesn't, you do not have to be at that level to get paid well as a writer. Now. Um, yeah. I, I mean, that's my re reflection on it. Yeah. And I think that, I think that you hit the nail on the head with it. Um, and I think too, you know, I mean, it's, uh, don't waste people's time is really important as well. Like when it you're writing. It depends on your client too. Yeah. But I think when you're writing this type of client, it's people do not have, we live in, in an age where we're competing with time, right? We're competing yeah. with, and so content that can draw people in quickly and get them interested and then keep them on the page. I think that's yeah. very important. If, um, if, we go, if we go back to the BuzzFeed and Huffington Post, a lot of those articles wasted people's time. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And, you know, and, and like they, did it on, they did it on purpose. Um, yeah. I, I think they did it on purpose. And technically they were good. Like some of the BuzzFeed articles, very, very good. Like I know that people are going to say what, but like from a, a comedy standpoint, from a timing standpoint, there was some really great writing going on. Well, curiosity, especially you think about the yeah. headlines and the advertisements there. Yeah killer they are really yeah. great and they're they're drivel right yeah but those are the types of things that for um those are the types of things you can implement and you can use like we often teach so when you teach how do you write a great headline i often say well go look at the national Enquirer, mm -hmm. <laughs> right yeah. because it sits on the newsstand <laughs> and they don't have any subscribers right so the national choir yeah. Enquirer has zero nobody gets that mailed to their house yeah. they don't want to see that the mail the mail they don't want the mailman to see that they're reading that so <laughs> you can't sign up for a subscription you buy it in, in the newsstand, so the headlines sell it. And that's what you see the BuzzFeed and Huffington Post doing. Um, but I don't think they respect people's time, right? And you talked about uh, like arbitrage, right? Like you talked yeah. about, it used to be a case of they could get traffic for cheaper, you know, and then they could sell space for advertising. Mm -hmm. Now that the, the cost of advertising, the cost of getting traffic is increasing, it's mm -hmm. no longer a profitable business model, right? Yeah. So arbitrage, if anybody doesn't know what that is, that's like if I go to a store 
a, like Marshall's, like one of those discount stores. And I see a Samsonite suitcase that's selling for 20 bucks. That's brand new. And I look on amazon.com and that Samsonite suitcase is a hundred bucks. And I buy that, that Samsonite suitcase and I go and I list it on Amazon. Right. And, and I make however much profit. That's yeah. basically you're manipulating an inefficiency in the marketplace. Yeah. Right. So they used to be manipulating that inefficiency right? Where, and I don't know if this is too complicated, but moral of the story is it doesn't exist anymore, mm -hmm. right? So the drivel mm -hmm. just, the, it's just not worth it. You need to give, um, you need to have content, I think, with a greater purpose other than just getting the click. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, do we want to talk about another one of these or do we want to answer questions? Um, uh, I have yeah, some other examples here. Look at one more real quick. Uh, and we can go through these quickly. Um, I, I mean, the corn one, I think is a great place to start. Um, talking about these. Let's just... Um, yeah, let's do one more. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, one let's more. do one more. So this is an example of a piece that um, someone would find if they're interested in, interested in weight loss or dieting, right? They find this in a Google search. They find this shared on social media. It's informative, right? It has citations, but I think this is, this is a great example of something that people would pay, a client would pay at least, I think, three or $400 for. Oh, at least, and yeah. The reason that they would pay for this is because it has a clear purpose. Look how tight it, it is too. No big blocks of text. Right. Yeah. I love yeah. that about it. It's all, it's one sentence paragraphs, yeah. right? Things are cited here. So, you know, some research went into this and you can, you know, the quick navigation. I like the quick navigation, but this is content that helps people, mm -hmm. right? This is something that I think uh, if you want to be, right? So a lot of people say, what do you see in, in a blog post writer? Or what do you see in a writer who writes this type of content that clients are really looking to pay for? One of the things that I see in that type of person who, who's like, you know, I can do this or you can do this. Is the type of writer who can write this stuff can really empathize with the audience, right? They can understand where they are and they can say, hey, I want to give you this information and I want to help you. I don't just want to do that Huffington Post thing where it's like clickbait. Mm -hmm. Right. I want to help you. Right. And um, anyway, this is um, this is monetized through these advertisements. Um, but this also has, you know, links and call to actions out. Here are some approaches you can use. Right. Should you try it? Right. And these are opportunities where, you know, the client you're writing for can insert things for people to purchase. Right. Yeah. Or next steps that they can take. Mm -hmm. um, another one that I found just really quick. Um, say you're interested in photography, get into the headshot photography game with this guide. So this is a piece that's intended for a very specific audience, right? This is intended to go to people who are interested in um, making money with photography. They may be photographers and they want to know what they need to do to take headshots, right? They want to yeah. know how do I make money with their photography? And uh, this isn't as tight as the last one, but it's just, I mean, this may be an example of a, you know, 200 to $400 range blog post, maybe on the, you know, the $200 end, but it has the one commonality that it has. And you go through this and it has great tips. You're being helpful. You're empathizing with the plight of the reader that you have, but it has call to action, right? Ready to build a portrait photography portfolio. Boom. Here you go. Click here. Go. Um, and you can go on and on with these. I think this is the types of, uh, the, these are the types of content that people, um, that people like to read online. And it's the type of content that I think clients are looking for right now. Uh, yeah. Someone just said in the chat, where did these images and GIFs come from? Um, a lot of these are stock images. Uh, they'll come from big stock or they'll come from uh, places like that. And the client pays for them and the client finds them. Mm -hmm. um, I just saw that pop up. So I wanted yeah. to talk yeah, about yeah. that real quick. But I don't know if you have any comments on these, but we could go on for days and days about what's going on here and the format and the formula that they're using because these have separate formulas, right? This is yeah. a story-based post. This is uh, more of an informational research-based post. This is a tips style post, right? Um, here's a list, right? I pulled up this, um, you know, how to write uh, a no your first novel, right? Mm -hmm. Like lists yeah. off 10 things that you need to do, 10 do's and don'ts. This is a yeah. formula, right? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the business side now that we kind of have. So for those of you who like this, uh, like the breakdown, uh, definitely check out the happy writer. Let me actually put the, the, um, yeah, if you can, I don't know how to turn off my share. 
Oh, yeah, I'll do that. One of Oh, wait, here we go. Happy writer. One of the things that we supply in that program is um, a bunch of uh, templates for, uh, I can't remember how many templates we have. It's, it's quite a few templates. Uh, and they're not really templates in the sense of like fill in the blank Mad Lib style templates. We'll talk about them in a minute. They're more like uh, frameworks for uh, executing the efficiency required that we talked about to create blog posts like that without having to like start over from scratch every single time. But I want to talk a little, so if you're interested in that kind of stuff and want some sort of guidance, Happy Writer has all of those. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit now about sort of the business side of things um, because that's, you know, we're talking about how do you get to a six figure business? And there's a couple of questions here and I'll start answering them. And then if you want to jump in, Peter, let me know. There's yeah. basically a question here of how do you get to a thousand dollars per blog post? And what's the difference between a thousand dollar blog post and a $200 blog post, a and $500 blog post and all these sorts of things. So here's what we teach in the happy writer in depth. So in depth specifically, we have training on something called a pillar post, which is a thousand dollar blog post. It's uh, basically the, the, the long of the short of it is the pillar post is one that is the best piece of content that's ever been made on that particular topic. And people will pay a thousand dollars for it because basically, uh, you know, it allows them to have dominance on that particular topic. Somebody called said thought leadership earlier. It's basically just the biggest, best piece of content that's really ever been made. An example of that, an example of that is actually the intermittent fasting um, exactly. article that I just shared because I write in the fitness niche as a copywriter. Yeah. And I actually knew that that post existed because I've personally gone to it to get my information straight before writing yeah. a piece. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It, it basically, the, the $1,000 blog post becomes a reference piece in nine cases out of 10. There are exceptions. The other way to measure the price of a blog post is the market value delivered to the client themselves. So let me explain that in a second. Someone asked what kind of niches pay $1,000 a blog post. Any, and any niche or any business that would make significantly more than $1,000 will always pay $1,000. So let me break that down at another level. If I have a business and my business sells $10,000 per month contracts for, let's say I want to be a consultant, okay? I'm maybe, let's say I'm a, I'm a consultant and I need someone to make content for my business. And every time I get a client, I'm able to charge $10,000 per month every time I get a client. I will happily, happily all day long 10 times a day pay a writer who can create a piece of content that positions me both as an authority and we'll break this down here in a second as an authority and has an effective what's called call to action which is to say as somebody is reading that piece of content and they become sort of impressed isn't the right word but they see me as someone who can help them because they're reading this blog post and then there's the call to action that says, hey, if you like this, go do this next step. Maybe it's book a strategy call with Mike and he'll see if he can help you. Or maybe it's join Mike's email list or whatever, or help Mike to stop talking in the third person or whatever that is, then you, I'll pay for that all day long because I can then take that piece of content as a business owner, put it on my social media, run paid traffic to it, send it to my email list, et cetera, and et cetera. And that $1,000 investment, it could, over the lifetime of that piece of content, we talked about evergreen content earlier, if you remember, if I just keep reusing it and keep reusing it, that piece of content could potentially bring me at least one client. If all it did would brought me one client, somebody says, you know what, I read that blog post, I was so impressed, I had to book a call with you, now we're working together. That piece of content is, to me, worth a hundred thousand dollars a year. So yeah, I'm going to pay you a thousand dollars to write that piece of content. Now how that content is structured, uh, what it looks like, what elements it contains, the call to action, that entire breakdown. That's the kind of stuff that we teach in the happy writer. So the happy writer is about 
this idea of efficient writing for business objectives. That's what all the frameworks are built to. We have in-depth training on how you, like what you need to know about what clients are actually looking for. How you, like how does a blog post play in an overall strategy, et cetera, and et cetera. So um, I don't know, what do you have thoughts on the difference between a 200 and a thousand dollar blog post? Uh, for me, it's all about the uh, return on investment, right? For in, that's basically, I think at its simplest form is what is the return on investment in terms of how much the client stands to make from it or uh, how much you're going to save them in, in time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. like for you instant, I mean, you could write all of your blog posts if you wanted to, right? But how much time is that going to take you? right? Yeah. Um, in, in how much, and you know, you need that content, even if the content does nothing, right? Yeah. So yeah. even if the content just attracts eyeballs and doesn't have any call to action statements or anything like that. And by call to action, I mean, you know, where it says get on the list, you're going to pay $200 mm -hmm. for those. You're going to pay $400 for those if it's great eyeball getting content. Yeah. Right. Um, and one thing that I will say on this is you get paid more, right? Based on what it does which is what you're saying, you know, based on the, um, the call to action or the, uh, the outcome that comes out of it, but you do not have to be a salesperson to write that type of content, right? Yes. You do not know how, how to sell people to write yeah. that type of content. I think a lot of people uh, believe that in order to write something that has that type of impact, you have to actually be a salesperson and what yeah. it, it, you don't, right? No. You just have to know, um, you just have to know what the purpose of the piece you're writing is. And yeah. I saw some questions as we're doing this about who directs the purpose of these things. Mm -hmm. right? So who tells you, um, you know, who tells you when the client, like when the client inserts call to action, this is from Susan, inserts calls to action. Do they tell you what links or products they want to promote every time? Yes, of course they do, because that is, that's the reason they have the content, mm -hmm. right? And that yeah. makes the process really easy as long as you're approaching the client with the mindset of what are the goals of the client? What yeah. do they want to achieve? And what are the words that I'm going to write help them? What, what are those words going to help them do? Yeah. Right. And one of the, honestly, one of the ways to get yourself more work. So I want to talk about this uh, just a little bit, but one of the ways, so what I love about whether it's blog post writing or copywriting, email copywriting, whatever it is, what I like about this shift in mentality about being a professional writer to say, I'm going to help somebody to achieve their objectives with my skill set of writing, which is essentially what we're talking about here. Um, you can actually step up and turn one off blog posts into monthly retainers, but it's this simple. It's this simple. And, and this brought it up for me, but if the client says, okay, I'd like to maybe get some more attention on having people book calls with me. Okay, great. That's awesome. Um, I'll write that blog post for you. You write the blog post, it performs well. Okay, let's say you have the right framework, you did your research, it performs well. And then you notice that your client has some other stuff. Maybe they have an opt-in. Maybe they have another offer. Maybe they have something else. This is how, and I think Peter can even agree with me here, and this is how he's turned a lot of his clients into retainers. This is how easy it is. He's like, hey, do you know what? Um, there's some other stuff of yours I'd love to like do for you. Do you want to just put me on like a monthly thing where I just kind of like make stuff for you and like I'll sort of make suggestions for, Hey, we should do this over here and we should do that over here. And clients, I'm, I'm telling you, they will thank you from the bottom of their hearts of, you mean you want to just take this off my plate and kind of like run with it. And that can turn into a 2000, 4000, 5000. $10,000 a month retainer. And these are not astronomical numbers. Like true or not true, Peter, you have $10,000 retainers. Uh, that's very true. I actually have um, at this point multiple. Yeah. <laughs> so as, um, and it, as it, do I, right? Like I've got more than one right. and that's how you do it. You start out with, let me get my foot in the door. And then by understanding what your client is looking for and being the expert or being the professional or being the person who has the training and the knowledge and the insight of, how to use content or copy or whatever it is to help their business objectives. You can literally take that from the client and they will be so grateful. 
what is what is even what I think is paired with this, what is super effective, and you know how hard this is to find, are people who treat their clients' businesses like their own, yeah. or they approach them with the same level of care and respect, maybe not the same level, but a level of care and respect where they understand that what they do matters mm -hmm. and they think about they think about what they're doing and they try to think of things that not just, they're not just things to do, but things mm -hmm. that will help the client succeed. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that's helped me get retainers while we're on the title, it's like, how do you become a six figure, uh, you know, writer? Yeah. One of the yeah. keys are these retainer agreements. And one of yes. the things that have really helped me do this is not just coming up with more things for them to do, but expressing my understanding of their goals and how I can help them achieve them, those goals and to let them know if they have me on a retainer agreement, I am always on board, always looking out and always looking for opportunities for them to help, for them to go after their goals and mm -hmm. ways that I can help them do that. Mm -hmm. I think it's very hard to find, I think it's very hard to find writers or freelancers in general who are willing to do that. Uh, would it's you true. agree? Yeah, um, it's true. It's, and, and all it yeah. takes is just, it, it's like, all it takes is a basic human connection. It doesn't even take that much to do. Like yeah. anyone can do that. It just takes your ability to care. And yeah. I think a lot of us care, but I think a lot of people, um, when it comes to the work they do, they disconnect their ability to care from the work, mm -hmm. right? So I think a key here is you care, right? Yeah, it's a shift from employee mentality too. Like employee mentality is what's my job description. I'm only going to stay within the bounds of my job description. I'm not going to go outside. The key to retainer agreements, in my opinion, is to say, what else can I help you with? Right. Which you would think is like so easy, but having, I mean, I'm, I'm in the process now on the point in my life and Peter's been there with me uh, where we're hiring a lot of people. And I'm telling you, if you're worried that the market is saturated, don't be. One, most people don't know how to write blog posts like this or emails like this. They, they, their focus is entirely wrong. They don't look at it from a business objective. They look at it from an entirely different point of like, how good was my sentence? Um, so don't, you know, you're like, honestly, don't do this because I think it's immoral. But if you ever wanted to figure out like, who am I competing with? Go to pro blogger and spend the $50 to put up a job posting and you'll get oh, 300 applicants totally within, a great idea. within 24 hours. And I promise you, you'll be like, oh, there's, it's not as competitive as I thought it was. Uh, so there's that aspect. But then the second aspect is how few writers I've ever worked with. I mean, and we've been hiring since Pete and I first met, like what, since 2013, 2014, 2015, whatever it is. So three, four, five years now, we've been hiring writers. How few of them actually do what you said and like care legitimately care very few how few actually ask me as a client hey mike what are you trying to do here mm -hmm. like, well what are you i doing? just what are you i doing? just had a, a blog writer a few weeks ago who you know hey can you write on these topics and okay here you go here are the fi here's the final part there were no questions there was nothing and this is a person who is going to be in the blog post that we were getting from this writer uh, they were, we weren't expecting groundbreaking blog posts, right? So yeah. there's multiple levels of content that clients pay for. Yeah. So clients pay for content that's just designed to maybe be read. It's filler content. Mm -hmm. uh, clients will pay for content that's made for SEO purposes, right? Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. client, clients will pay for higher quality blog posts or higher quality content that, that is designed to get to attract people to read. And then clients will also pay for pillar posts and things like that stuff you've talked yeah. about. We were looking for lower quality content, but I could see why this writer would be forever trapped at the, I'm going to write a $50 blog, mm -hmm. right? Like mm -hmm. in, in happily, and I'm sure, I'm sure she sits down and she can type out one of these in an hour and she tells everyone, I make, you know, I make $50 an hour. Yeah. Right. I'm sure that's the case. And, you know, great, but she could be doing like, 30 minutes more work and making four times as much if she had just asked, okay, what's the purpose of this blog post? What do you want it to do? And 
what, what are your goals, right? Mm -hmm. Like what, what should I do to achieve that? And I could have typed that off in 15 minutes. I'm sure she could have done it. And mm -hmm. it would have turned a post that we would normally pay $50 for into me thinking, oh my gosh, this writer gets it. Mm -hmm. Like this is someone who understands what we're trying to do. Maybe we can pay her a little bit more to write our higher quality content. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the amount of people who just don't do that really surprised me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And in the happy writer program, we, we go in depth about, um, well, it's really what to ask, right? And what's yeah, to mm -hmm. the questions. Yeah. Yeah. It's what to ask and what to look for. And then, um, you know, how do you write that higher quality content? Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right. I think we'll take a few more questions and then um, we will, I want to tell you guys a little bit about the happy writer because this is our final, our final deal here. We're never going to launch it again. The only way you'll be able to get it in the future is uh, as a ha as a member of our triple point. Um, let's talk a little bit about sort of client getting um, yeah, we in terms of that. like what kinds of businesses you've worked with in the past um, how you sort of got connected with them, things like that. Yeah. So, um, I mean, this is a, this is a packed question too. I feel like everything has so many answers. Uh, so yes, when it comes to client getting, I mean, you obviously have client getting methods you teach and all that stuff, but the, the businesses that I work with and the businesses I go after, I picture uh, there are like three different types of businesses. I think that need this type of content that need blog content or need even, you know, copywriting, uh, which blog is not copywriting. You're not selling with words necessarily, but I, I picture three types of businesses out there in what I call the internet age, which I think is, it's like the world of golden opportunity for writers, mm -hmm. right? Because there's just so much demand. So there's three types. And I, I picture there are big companies that have complex corporate structures. Right. And I kind of put those guys at the top. Mm -hmm. they, they pay great rates, but they have complex hierarchies where you have to pass a bunch of ideas through a bunch of different people. Mm -hmm. And you may have multiple bosses. Yeah. There are uh, mom and pop type businesses, which are like, and I call them mom and pops because they're like the mom and pops of the internet. There are only a few decision makers, right? Yeah. Like there are like one or two, maybe three people who are key players. The Those are the pants I like, and they're really helpful how to be writers. He's the one that makes the decisions. He's the one that runs the business with the help of other people, sure. But if you want to get hired, mm -hmm. it's basically his call. And if you want to get something approved, it's basically his call. I call these mom and pops. And then there are the startups, which are kind of on like this third tier. Yeah. My clients tend to be that middle portion of people where you work closely with the person running the business. And just because these are mom and pops do not mean they're small businesses. So some yeah. of my clients make, you know, multiple tens of millions of dollars a year, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But they have, they have tighter, what I call hierarchies of organizational structure. And the reason I really love working with these businesses in, in going after these types of clients and looking for these types of clients to work with, which um, by the way, for anybody listening, once you're established with like one or two clients, you don't really ever have to go after clients again. Yeah. Um, because it just comes it's in true. like a waterfall. Uh, yeah. Because they know people and those people know people. And from there on out, you have a referral business and you have to turn people away. Um, so, I mean, I mean, there's it's that true. aspect. It's true. Yeah. But the reason I love working with these people and the reason that I went after these types of businesses to begin with is because um, they're so much fun to work with. And there's so much less stress and less hassle. You and I have both worked for some of the same clients. Uh -huh. and you, you and I have both worked, um, well, not some of the same. I mean, there are probably two or three, maybe four instances where we've worked for the same client, either at the same time or, you know, one right after the other, right? Yep. And I know that some of those clients we worked with were in that, were in that tier of client where they were complex and you had to pass your ideas through multiple people. And it was more like being an employee than being a freelancer or yes. being a, a yeah. business owner. Yeah. And, you know, you come off like, why, why do I not work in an office building to begin with? Yeah. <laughs> it's because I do not enjoy working with people who, where I have to sit in a boardroom and I have to say, okay, I have this idea. 
yeah. and then 15 people have to talk about it. Yeah. So I picture there being three types of clients out there. There's the big guys with huge, huge corporate structures. And if you like writing for those guys, it can be very lucrative, right? Yes. But it can yeah. be just as lucrative to write for, for smaller businesses, mom and pops. Those are the types of clients I look for. Yeah. And then, you know, the question is how to get them. The reality is that once you go out and you approach these types of businesses, they are begging for your help. They really are because I feel like there are so few, there are so few writers out there who understand how to approach work or approach the things that they're writing with the business's objectives in mind. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of these businesses, a lot of any type of business, they have horror stories about writers who just don't get it. Yeah. Right. Or just can't turn things in on time even, Mm -hmm. or, you know, and that's the one that I hear the most is we've heard all these horror stories about working with writers because they just, they don't respond to emails and they don't turn things in on time and they don't do this and they don't do that. That yeah. will get you so far. It really will. <laughs> I mean, it's insane how far it can get you. But, uh, someone asks, uh, this is a really good question because I wanted to talk about it while we're still on the topic of the three yeah. different sizes of, of business. In their, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah, Jordan asks, uh, so can you talk a little bit about the nature of communication between yourself and the client and the range of what that looks like? For example, for a one-off $250 blog post, is it strictly an online transaction? Whereas with a $250 retainer, are you on the phone with them every week? Generally, how do these various clients find you? So first I want to talk about the communication because there's two elements of this. One is like Peter was saying, the business size. So when he and I uh, both shared that very basic, basically a corporate account, we were both sort of working on at the same time. And by the way, the reason we were working on at the same time is because I got the contract and then I was like, Pete, they need another writer. Do you want to like, do you want to do this? So having a stable of, of writer friends is very important because you guys, there's way more demand for good writers than there are supply of good writers. So if you have like a core group of people who, are good at what they do, then there's always going to be like, Hey, I've got to, you know, there's going to be switch. I I hand people off all the time. Yeah. I'm too busy. I am too busy. And there are like four or five people and you're like, Hey, do you, do you want to do this? Do you want to do this? I can't do it. And I know you. You And as, and as a writer, I can tell you being able to hand stuff off to Peter or Peter handing it off to me. So personally having Peter available for me to hand stuff off to is like a huge uh, blessing and a huge good thing for me because when I hand them, when I hand a client off to Peter, I know they're in good hands. So I get to save face. I still get to look, you know, like they, people still appreciate You still get the connection. Yeah. I'm not burning relationships and all that kind of stuff. Uh, But in terms of the communication piece, it, there's two things. So one is the size of the client with the corporate client, Peter and I, I mean, I was on phone calls all the time. And that's part of what, what you get paid extra for. So Peter's right. Like you get bigger contract. That contract was like $16,000 a month, but I was also on the phone. There was a point where I was on the phone for an hour a day with their team. So I earned that money. Um, I don't like that situation or that setup personally. If you don't mind being on the phone, that's fine. I don't like it personally, so but I also, have- I also have had $12,000 a month contracts where I didn't get on the phone once. And part of that is the size of the client. It was working directly with the, it was like, what was Peter saying, calling a mom and pop organization. But also it's about the boundaries that you set up. So if you are good enough at what you do, meaning you know and understand how to deliver results for a client, you get to dictate the terms of how you work with the client because you aren't an employee you are a business owner. The, the thing you sell is your writing. Therefore, you get to have terms and policies of your business. Like if you go into a restaurant, a restaurant has certain terms and policies. You're not allowed to walk into a restaurant naked and expect to be served. The same is true <laughs> if, well, there might be a restaurant somewhere where that's the case, but most, re- you know, so. And then there are restaurants where you have to wear a suit jacket. Yeah. And exactly. Right? And there's, like I ate at one of those on Friday. Exactly. It, was like, it was like, you got to wear a suit jacket. And you know what? Some people came in, some people came into that restaurant 
and they had blue jeans on and they weren't wearing a suit jacket. And I was like, wow, you are out of place here. But they sat them down and they fed them because those people were really valuable <laughs> clients. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's a two way street, right? But yeah, um, you make the terms. I love this. Yeah. I just want yeah, to say so you, I love it. you make the terms. It's your business. If you're good enough and respectful. Now, this isn't about being a diva, please. I don't want any, I don't want the No Pants Project to ever make a diva, ever. The life is too short to be a diva. It's not about, here's my boundaries and I'm going to, you know, and you're the, and you have to bend to my will. It's more about saying, this is what I need as a writer to do my best work. And maybe that's some space. Like I need to, like when I work with my clients, I can't have clients breathing down my neck. Otherwise I know what I turn in isn't good. So I tell them, I say, look, here's what it takes to get the best out of me, AKA here's what it takes to get the best out of your investment. And I say, you know, probably not going to be able to do phone calls. If we do, they need to be scheduled like this. Here's a link to my calendar, like et cetera, et cetera. Um, and either the clients want to get the most out of their investment or they don't. If they don't, then we just move on. I don't work with clients that I'm going to do a bad job working with because there's too many clients. There's too much of a demand. Um, and so, yeah, that's just how I approach it. I love that approach too, because it saves your, it saves your life. Yeah. Right? It saves the things that matter. Right. Yeah. Um, so part of those boundaries are how you're more productive, but I think it also, it disconnects, uh, it, it allows you to have a, a disconnect that keeps work or keeps, you know, it is work. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about things that we enjoy doing, mm -hmm. but it keeps that work process from taking over the rest of your life. Yeah. I mean, for example, I'm most productive as a writer after nine o'clock. Yeah, me too. In the evening, when, the, when the babies are asleep, mm -hmm. my wife comes and hangs out with me in our little office. She does her sewing and stuff. And I just sit and tie, like, that's when I'm most productive when everything's quiet and calm. If a client wants me to like, this needs to be done by 10 a.m. I need you to work on it at night. I just can't. It's not possible. Um, yeah, so knowing yourself is. I agree. Yeah, I, um, I'm the same way. I'm more productive in the evening at night and then it has to be quiet, right? It yeah. just it has to be. And other people go and they work at coffee shops and I do it too. I have tricks and things that I use to yeah. get myself motivated. Everybody does. <laughs> right? Everybody has little tricks when you don't want to do this, right? Yeah. I think that's part of writing too is... Um, it's the willingness to sit down and treat it like a serious job and a serious business. Yeah. Right. So I think a lot of people, one of the challenges that I had on a personal level when I became a writer, and now we're talking like I've been writing content for web publication in one way or another since 2007. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but when I started to do it full time, right. When I said, okay, this is what I'm going to do for, career like this is it this is my business you have you have friends you have family who don't think you're serious mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right because you're a writer mm -hmm. right it's like in so that's a challenge that i had in i mean the way one of the ways i got over that challenge personally is i set very clear boundaries with everyone who knew me and with even family like in-laws right? in like, even, you know, even my wife, it's like, these are the times when I'm working. Yeah. Right. It, it's yeah. really interesting. And anyway, um, the only thing I, at the end, I mean, with like, so my father-in-law, the only thing that ever convinced him that it was a serious is like, just, just calm down. Here's my tax return. <laughs> <laughs> but and then, then he's never said a word again. He was talking about He's, he was talking about, um, so he was talking about how much money I was saving into my SEP IRA. Yeah. The federal contribution limit is like 55,000 something. And I'm like, yeah, I maxed it out. Right. He's like, what? I'm like, he's like, what's the max? I'm like, it's like 55,300. Was this your, was, was this your father-in-law? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, he's I, all I, like I never told that you weren't him. taking care of his, his daughter. Right. I'm like, you're I, a bum writer, are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, but I mean, um, this was years ago, you know, so yeah. it's just like, I'm like, yeah, I maxed it out, you know, it's like, uh, okay. And so I just, I feel like a lot of people on the outside of this don't believe it's possible. 
Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. But I mean, the, the reality is that it not only is, it's, it's relatively easy to achieve. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'll say one last thing and then we'll get to the happy writer stuff. Cause I, sure. I, w- I want to say a massive thank you to Peter, uh, for sharing his time. Um, he gave freely of his time, which if you listened, his time is very expensive. So thank you, Peter, very much for, uh, uh sharing all this stuff with us. It's so um, I love this. Yeah. Yeah. And I think what I want people to take away is that, you know, cause Peter said it's, it's relatively simple, um, to, to get started in this business. I think the mindset to have uh, just in general, like how do I get clients and what am I writing? And of course the happy writer, it's a program available to you if you want to check it out and uh, it goes in depth. It's a full training program, all that whole, whole stuff. But ultimately at the end of the day, it's about this very simple concept, which is if you want people to believe that you can help them, help them. That's how you get the clients. That's how you create content. When you sit down and you look at your content and you say, what, how is this going to be a good piece of content? It, it's a piece of content that helps somebody in some positive way. When you look at how am I going to close this client, show them that you can help them by actually helping them before they even pay you any money. And there's lots of different ways to do that. In the Happy Writer program, we have uh, uh, ways that you can get clients within 24 to 78 hours or 72 hours, just sending a few emails or sending some LinkedIn messages. There's, uh, you could go on LinkedIn and create uh, you know, uh, pieces of content that you share with your LinkedIn circle. You could, I wouldn't recommend blogging for clients, like on your own platform. You need to use someone else's platform because blogging on your own platform right now is not a great traffic move. Um, but if you go to Facebook or, or LinkedIn or whatever, you start making content uh, or you use our, our, our fast client getting workshop stuff. It's all about at the end of the day, you know, we've talked a lot about business and commercialism and capitalism and call to action and get them. But at the end of the day, a good commercial writer, whether it's copywriting or whatever, or blog post writing is somebody who's very good, very good at helping people, whether you're helping the audience of your client or you're helping your client. That's ultimately I think what has gotten Peter to where he's at, I can tell you without a doubt, it's how I got to where I'm at. Um, Not saying that I'm a terribly altruistic person. I certainly have my cranky days, but being the person in the sea of writers who's willing to help uh, does make a big difference. So um, yeah. Did you want to say anything there, Peter? No, I think that hits the nail on the head. Okay. That's, that's it. I'll let you do your, uh, yeah. Your awesome. Yeah. yeah. So again, thank you. Big thanks to Peter. Really do appreciate the time. Hopefully this has been helpful. We will send out replays. Um, but I want to talk about the happy writer program because it is going away Friday night forever for public access, unless you, uh, purchase our higher price program, which is called the triple point program. Um, that program includes some done for you client getting, it includes, um, uh, email copy, like teaching you how to be a copywriter, how to write webinars. It's sort of our premier program. There's group coaches, but that program is starts at $4,000. So the happy writer is the last program, uh, that will be really be ever, uh, launching in this sort of price range here. Uh, and that's not a scam. That's not us saying, you know, we're going to whip it out in four months or whatever. Uh, that's true. So I want to walk through what the happy writer course contains for those of you who are wondering, um, it's broken down into a couple sections. So the first section is we help you to find your niche. And this is a screenshot of the dashboard itself. We'll help you find a niche. So one that we talked about earlier, the passion, uh, making sure that whatever, whoever you write for, you have passion because that's what gets you through hitting the deadline. So it gets you through the research. You should feel like you're playing when you're doing this business. Um, And that's not because, you know, we're the sort of Instagram generation of if it doesn't make you happy, don't do it. It's because it's a business decision. If you are not in a state of flow when you're writing, you're likely not going to be creating good writing. And we want to create the best writing as possible for our clients. So we help you to find a niche. We help you to create something called an expertise statement, which is something you can fire off very quickly to let clients know. It's basically the messaging of who are you, what you do, and how you can help clients. It's critical to being able to land clients is knowing what your expertise statement is. 
We'll help you to build a website. We'll show you exactly what you need. It's a lot less than you think you need. We even have templates and things for that particular website. So if you're absolutely just starting out, um, and then we're going to get into the job description. So you may have noticed that we think about blog post writing a little bit differently. We think about writing a little bit differently. Um, and it's a big reason why we are at the income levels that we're at. We want to break down uh, in, in much deeper detail what exactly it is that you do as a writer of blog posts, as a content marketer, whatever you want to call yourself, so that you can communicate that effectively to your clients so that they understand that they're not just paying for a writer. One of the worst things you can do is go to a client and say, I'm a writer. And they're going to be like, oh, okay, so you're a writer like all of these other writers? No, you want to differentiate yourself out of the gates so that they see you in a professional role. Because whether we like it or not, writers are not generally viewed as high level professionals. It's an unfortunate thing, but they are viewed as a commodity, which is to say, there's a bunch of them out there. Therefore, what I get to do, you know, my deciding factor on whether or not I'm gonna hire you is price. So we wanna get out of that market. We don't want to be a commodity. We want to, we want to be able to communicate what it is we do in terms of results, benefits, et cetera. Now you can still call yourself a writer, but you have to be careful about how you position yourself. Okay. So we'll be talking about that in section three. These are some of our templates. We'll be talking about how to polish, um, uh, productivity, the most important headlines, the different types of posts, how to plan a blog campaign. So this is a first step towards retainership. Here's all the different frameworks and et cetera. Uh, we also give you, so let's say for example, that you have landed a client that pays you for five articles and they pay uh, $200 per, per article or blog post or whatever you want to call it. And, and, and that's your retainer. You love that retainer. You're so grateful for that retainer, but it's still only a thousand dollars a month. And let's say that if you could just make an extra $500 per month with this client, you'd be golden, right? Let's say you have other clients, but this one specifically, if you could just get it to a $1,500 retainer, you'd be over the moon. Well, section four is all about additional services like Peter and I that we're talking about that you could add to any retainer that would allow you to charge a couple hundred up to a thousand dollars more per month. So things like retargeting, setup little social media services, little guest posting, and then of course the big one, the pillar post. So the, the section four is all about how do I add more value to the clients beyond just the blog post that I've written uh, you know, for those clients. So again, this is a step into retainership. The ultimate goal of the happy writer is not just that you make $400 for a blog post, it's that you land retainers and have income consistency in your business. It's a lot easier to quit your job when you've got a handful of retainers than it is, you know, looking your spouse in the eyes and saying, yeah, I'm totally going to quit my job with these one-off projects that I don't know if I have any next week or not. Right. So that's ultimately the goal of happy writer. Um, and then section five is really breaking down the client conversation. So, when you have a client, what do you say? What do you need to understand? How do you get the client to say yes? What is the process of getting a client to jump onto a retainer? Uh, what does the client need to know? What do you need to demonstrate in order for the client to say yes? That's in section five, we break that all down. This is what the modules look like. There's a video training, for example, um, and then for like a blog post starter. Here's one of the quote unquote templates. It's really a framework. Uh, Peter mentioned earlier, a good blog post is written based off of good questions. These are the questions that you go through and you ask um, either yourself or the client. These are the blog posts, um, the examples, good examples, bad examples of this particular quote post style post that you would be writing. So again, this is here for you to have a framework that you can work through mentally to create the kind of posts that deliver the results that Peter and I have talked about. Additionally, we have, um, I believe it's about 700 pages worth of all sorts of different, you know, article templates, blog post templates, um, headline templates, how to prepare content, how to improve your information, all these sorts of different things, silly pages and pages and pages. 
It's the ultimate resource. I've never seen anything like this before online. And, and that's just straight truth um, in terms of if ever you had a client and you're like, how am I going to deliver a result for them? You have everything you need to uh, have the resources at your, avail at your disposal to, to, to deliver the result because it's delivering the result that will ultimately do what Peter and I have been talking about where you get a, you know, two or three clients in your first 30 days and then you never have to do client getting stuff ever again because either they're on retainer and they want to keep you forever or they keep sending you referrals. Like that's a writer who can deliver results in 2019. That's their life. They get a couple of clients early on. They do, you know, and I'll show you how we do that in happy writer. And then after that it's retainers and referrals. Um, but it's about the results. That's ultimately what matters in that, that scenario in that relationship. Now we have a couple of extra bonuses. These are our farewell bonuses because the happy writer is going away. I am sad by this, but very happy about our triple point program um, because uh, it's going to help us and allow us to serve people at a really, really high level. Uh, this is of course the infamous, now infamous fast client getting workshop. A lot of the results that our people see come from uh, this particular program. So for example, uh, someone sends out 15 emails and they get a discovery call with a client. Um, booking two discovery calls without, um, without even sending any emails. Uh, two discovery calls after starting cold emails, sent five emails, got discovery calls, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, these are examples. These are weekly examples in the, in the Fast Client Getting Workshop program. So you guys will get that. This is not the only way to get clients, however. Again, if you don't want to get on the phone to get clients, you can literally use Happy Writer on LinkedIn or Facebook to create content to attract people. This one, however, is just very, is a very fast way to get clients. Uh, if you go the LinkedIn or Facebook route where you're creating content, it will get you clients, but it's a long-term strategy, especially if you don't already have a big following on LinkedIn um, or on Facebook. This also works even if you don't want to use email, if you just want to use LinkedIn only. So if you want to keep kind of your, your life separate, uh, same thing, the training's all available in, in, in the Fast Client Getting Workshop. We also have an additional bonus for you, which is how to be a content director. This is in and of itself a standalone $2,000 per month service. So you heard Peter talking about how he hires writers. What Peter is, is a content director for one of his clients. I have been a content director for one of my clients. Um, part of that $16,000 a month contract that I was talking about is I was a content director, which is why I hired Peter as one of the writers. So the content director's role is to step out of the, the typing of the words and to actually uh, be a director. So you hire writers on behalf of your uh, client. So the client will pay the writers and you are the director. So we call, you know, um, when I explain it in the program, it's like being a TV director, right? You have the script writer, you have the actors, you have all these, and your job is kind of just to move the pieces around on behalf of your client. The No Pants Project has a content director. Her name is Jessica Berlin, and she gets paid $2,000 a month uh, to direct our content and our blog. It's a really fun position um, if you kind of like big picture thinking. So we, we walk you through all the things you need to understand, all the strategy, all the um, the how to hire writers, I believe we have in here. Yeah, where to find the writers, writer workflow, paying the writers, um, other team members that you may need, how to build a promotional calendar, what to do if it's not working, right? Like, again, it's all about results. So what happens if you get hired as a content director and then what you're doing doesn't work, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, analytics and a bunch of other cool stuff. Okay. Also, if you order before Friday night, at midnight, we are going to be giving you a free ticket to a live two-day writer's workshop. This is a digital workshop. It's either going to happen at the very end of the month in February or at the beginning of the month in March. And it's going to be a couple of guests. So Peter's going to be on there. Um, I'll be there. We're going to have a couple of other people. It's going to be a Saturday and a Sunday. So it'll be available to everybody. There's going to be recordings and everything. Um, and it'll be digital, so you don't have to leave your house. You can wear no pants. We are the No Pants Project after all. <laughs> um, and it's going to be really cool. So it's going to be a lot more of this kind of a thing that we did with Peter, a lot more in-depth. We're going to be covering all sorts of different fun topics, so get a free ticket to that. 
those of you who are in triple point academy or triple point accountability in six figure writer and in happy writer already you guys also get a free ticket to this so you don't need to buy it again um and then of course does this stuff actually work that's what we all look uh, i'm results driven so if you haven't caught on by now my whole thing is if you want a good business, you got to get results. So whether, you know, that's me teaching you how to do this, I'm going to teach you to be a results driven person or whether that's the no pants project. Nick purchased this, the happy writer just this week already has some client stuff lined up. Sarah Copeland um, has happy writer. She just started it recently, $800 last week doing happy writer stuff. Krista is one of the testimonials you may have seen. Uh, Sarah, I, I believe is also one of the testimonials you may have seen. Um, she makes a really good point. You have to do the math for yourself. If you will take action on it, you can pretty quickly make back your investment. If you're likely to purchase and then not listen to the videos, then it's much less likely to be a success story. That's very good advice from Krista. So this program will absolutely work if you work it. That's the big thing, right? So I'm not gonna guarantee anybody overnight riches and success by watching a video and doing nothing. That's unrealistic. And you know, I want to be transparent here. However, if you do implement all of the tools and the stuff that we have uh, shared with, showed, showed you and shared with you, 100%, uh, this is very doable. Now, don't get this, I don't want anyone to be mistaken here. This is a very simple business, but simple doesn't necessarily mean easy. Now, I know I'm gonna lose some sales by saying this, but I wanna be transparent here. Simple is, it's a very straightforward process. There's frameworks, et cetera. But you do have to put in the work. Easy would be like, I don't know if you guys watched that fire documentary and like saw that shenanigans on, on Netflix um, about the guy who basically lied and scammed and Instagram models and stuff. If that's the world you want to belong to, that's fine. I'm telling you it's a fake world. Like there is no such thing as an overnight push button solution. Um, where you click, a, you know, you, you buy a software and all of a sudden you're rich overnight. That doesn't actually happen. However, the good news is, is that what does exist and what is real is simple stuff, like simple strategies. Um, and I think if you're at a point in your life where you just want a simple way to make money, or if you're a freelancer or a service provider or a creative right now, and you're just like, I just want a simple thing that people need and you know, I, I'm interested in, in, in certain topics or I think writing could be cool. This is a really good starting point to get your business up and running and going, both from the cost of the investment, uh, uh, you know, compared to other programs, uh, but also in terms of your own, like how fast it's gonna take you to get up to speed. So for example, um, Nick mentioned that he's not done professional writing before and within basically a week has clients lined up. So I don't know of anything that is that quick in terms of going from standing still to starting. And I'm talking about just blog post writing uh, in general. So keep that in mind as well. Um, and then Jennifer, of course, uh, three more ready got a raise after writing the first for the second and the third. So like I said, this is, uh, uh, this is stuff that's really, really important. Some of you have seen this case study before. This is Justin Boyer. He's one of our students. Um, he used a lot of what was in the happy writer to land $5,000 in new client work in two and a half weeks. What you guys don't know from that, um, that case study is that he was able to also turn one of those clients into a $5,000 per month retainer doing content. Um, his passion was technology. And so he has been able to do content for uh, technology companies and businesses um, and they pay him around $500 per blog post. Uh, and he's got a client on a, at least $5,000 uh, per month retainer. So the sale ends Friday night. Uh, the URL to purchase is the nopantsproject.com forward slash the hyphen happy hyphen writer. Let me pop that in. And I see we've got a couple of questions. So let me go about answering that. So let me pop this link in here real quick. And I do want to say again, thank you to Peter but also thank you to you guys um, for showing up. Um, I really do appreciate it. It makes it fun when there's good questions. <laughs> it makes it really fun. Okay.
Let me see. Let me scroll past you. Let me check out the Q and A here real quick. Okay, so uh, Andrea says, thank you so much. You guys are inspiring. Quick question. You say blogging on our own site isn't worthwhile. And then someone else says blogging on your own platform is not a good move. Does that still apply if you share the content to other platforms? So I just want to be uh, clear about that. If you're just starting out and you have no audience whatsoever, I wouldn't recommend your sole client getting strategy to be blogging, where you just put blog posts up and then don't do anything. If, however, you've got a following on social media, if you've got a, a following on LinkedIn or something, post it on your blog and then share it on LinkedIn and Facebook, 100%. Uh, I just want to make sure uh, what I'm being clear about here is the idea of write it and they will come is not really a thing anymore in 2019. Uh, you do have to actively promote whatever content you do. So just make sure that you're utilizing platforms that already pop have populated traffic in them, if that makes sense. Um, Holly says, I'm in the triple point program, but I don't see the happy writer there. Uh, check your bonus section, Holly. Uh, you may need to uh, refresh your dashboard, but everyone who has triple point has access to happy writer. If you don't see it in there, um, it may, I'm not sure why you wouldn't see it in there, but if you still don't, please do reach out to us at help at the nopantsproject.com. Might be a glitch or something, I'm not sure, but everyone who is in the Triple Point program does have access to Happy Writer, and everyone who's in the Triple Point program will also have access to all these bonuses. Um, let's see, Melinda says, does that mean that the Happy Writer must be completed in a certain time frame? Absolutely not. You have lifetime access to this program forever and ever. The program itself is never going away. Us selling it to the public is going away on Friday, if that makes sense. And meaning uh, as a standalone product. So after Friday night, the only way you'll ever be, you'll, you'll be able to access, uh, you know, if you aren't already a member, the only way you'll be able to access it is if you're a member of the triple point program. Um, Rebecca says, are the happy writer training videos accessible offline? I don't think so. I do not believe so. Um, Melinda says, is there support for the people who have purchased the happy writer or is that only available with the coaching, um, which isn't available at the time? Um, so there's a couple of ways that you can get coaching support for the happy writer. One way is if you are in our No Pants Project core program. So you just, you have the happy writer um, and that actually is available right now. Uh, you just have to reach out to us at help at the no pants project.com. We're being a little bit more selective about who we let into that program. So that's the cheaper version of getting support for the happy writer. Um, but happy writer is not a bonus in the No Pants core program. So there's coaches available to help you there, but it's not free if you sign up for the No Pants Project. It is free if you're in the Triple Point Program, and that's the, that's the other way to get support, but the Happy Writer Program itself does not come with coaching. Um, it's only $500, so uh, it, we, it, it, it's not, uh, the price isn't there for, for me to be able to afford paying coaches. I would love to uh, at that price, but the numbers just unfortunately don't work out for us. Um, Patty says, it looks really comprehensive. Is it for B to B writing in addition to B to C? Uh, I, so I want to be super clear and careful, um, knowing Patty, your, your background. Um, it absolutely would work for B to B as well as B to C, um, in that as long as the B to B clients that you're working for, embed call to actions, meaning as long as they follow a sales process, which includes either signing up for an email list or have a strategy call with me or, um, you know, uh, get this coupon for a service of mine, as long as there are embedded call to actions within your particular B2B niche, then yes. If it's B to B where you're talking about um, 
like corporate B2B with minimum half million dollar contracts and ultimately the only way to make that contract happen is if you know they have an in-person meeting you know where most of those types of deals are done via networking rather than content <coughs> excuse me um the content we create in the happy writer would still work however what i question is are those companies actively using content marketing so Yes, it absolutely works for B2B. It just depends on whether the business itself is actively and appropriately set up for B2B. And that's a client to client sort of um, thing that you have to uh, figure out, if that makes sense. Uh, let's see, when will your new program be available? Uh, Triple Point is available now. Um, if you want to reach out to uh, help at the nopantsproject.com, we've been very kind of like low key about selling it. Um, it includes a lot of stuff. Like we send you things in the mail and uh, uh, I go out and look for clients and generate client leads and things like that, plus a bunch of other stuff. Uh, we've been kind of low key about it uh, at the moment. Um, we're getting fairly selective about who we let into programs these days. Not saying that you wouldn't get in. I'm just saying that's why we've been low key about it. We're kind of like only, um, selling it to certain people at the moment, but if you're interested in it, please don't hesitate. Just reach out, help at the no and what we'll happen is you'll likely talk to Kaylee, um, who kind of is our person who, uh, is directed to make sure that the people who buy our stuff are best suited for it, if that makes sense. And if you aren't suited for it, we'll just tell you like, hey, don't spend your money on this. You know, <laughs> uh, we, we're not gonna be able to help you. Or uh, they'll be like, yeah, you we can totally help you with that kind of stuff. Um, so someone asked, uh, how do you get access to the triple point if you already own Happy Writer? Can you access it at any point or is there a specific timeline to join? So if you're already in Happy Writer and you want to upgrade to Triple Point, again, just uh, shoot us an email, help at the nopantsproject.com. Um, we'd love to have you in the coaching group. Uh, we've got some really good coaches in there right now. We have a coach that is specifically dedicated to sales conversations um, and, and, and other coaches as well on the craft of writing and things like that. But if, as long as you just reach out to help at the nopantsproject.com, we'll get that sorted, probably get you in touch with Kaylee um, uh, to have those conversations. So Patrick has a good question. If I don't have a following and I've never written before, is creating a couple AGs, HTOs, and PPs? Um, those are nifty little acronyms we have. Uh, inside of the Happy Writer program uh, to distribute on LinkedIn groups, a good place to start before reaching out to people individually. Um, so Patrick, it depends on how fast you want results. If you want results right now, I would say go with the direct outreach. Yeah, I would say go with that. Make sure that you follow the first section where you have your uh, website set up appropriately with the appropriate portfolio pieces and then go straight to direct outreach. Um, Anna says, what else is in the triple point besides happy writer? So triple point is, um, it's the, uh, email copywriting program. So it's the six figure writer program. Uh, we also have a uh, training on, uh, so if you, so if you want to be a blog post writer and then like what Peter and I were talking about, like, how do you get a retainer? You look for other problem areas. If you got your foot in the door with blog posts and then you notice that the client needs some help with their emails, that's another retainer opportunity. And then we also have advanced training on things like how to write webinars, how to write. It's the, the triple point is for copywriters. So sales, copywriting. 
Um, we also have in there, of course, the access to the coaches. Let me count them in my head really quick. Let's see, there's me, there's Krista, there, Donna, uh, six. There's six different coaches. One of those coaches is specifically there for blog post writing. Um, the other, uh, one is there for sales conversations and then the rest is for writing mindset, all that whole thing. So there's that. Um, also when you sign up, you get a welcome package with some cool books that I really like. Uh, we send you a newsletter, uh, in the mail. Um, and then, uh, I am running ads to get clients for members of that group. So there's the coaching, the support, the training, I run ads to bring in leads for uh, the, the members of that group to submit their stuff, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then uh, it's our premier program for getting people to the six figure level as a writer. That's really ultimately the goal um, in that particular program. Um, so Alexa says, how can I find clients and companies to write for? Um, it, so use the fast client getting workshop uh, direct outreach program um, is the best way to do that. Uh, you mentioned you have the 90 day program. We have some email templates in there. What you'll want to do is find your dream clients and then send those direct outreach. Oh, someone asked, how do I get an entry level blog writer gig with you? I can respond to email, turn in my assignments on time and over deliver on what you asked for. Give me one assignment and I know that you'll give me more. So we actually hire our writers from the happy writer program. So we do not take um, writers who are not already trained in our, uh, in our process. So that's where we pull from. So that's something I should probably mention. Um, although I don't want people to buy it with the assumption that just because you buy it, you're going to get a, a job with us because that's also not true. But there is a section within happy writer that if ever you wanted to submit um, a request to be a writer for us, uh, we have that in there and we're always looking for good writers. Um, so, so a few people keep asking, is there, is there coaching and support with the happy writer? Uh, the only way to get, uh, so in my mind, coaching and support are the same thing. So if you have to, like, if you're looking to ask a question and get response, that's coaching. So that we, in, in the no pants, we call that coaching, um, support would be like, Hey, I can't log into my stuff, uh, that you'll always have support. The, the happy writer program will always be supported in that regard. If you're, if you miss your password or something like that. It does not come with, however, coaching. So again, I want to make sure that uh, we're perfectly, cl perfectly clear. A $500 program uh, doesn't have the, the, just the financial numbers for me to be able to make the coaching piece work. However, if you wanted to upgrade again into the no pants project program or into triple point, depending on what your budget is, there are two different price points. Um, you can, those numbers do support coaching. We have coaches available to offer support for that. Let's see. All righty, my dear friends. I think that's it for me. Again, a massive thank you to Peter. I hope Peter is, has dived off and is back to work, <laughs> but thank I'm, you. Peter. I'm still here. Mike. Are you still here? <laughs> oh <my gosh. laughs> well, Peter, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks it's for having me. Um, Thanks for supporting our final launch here of the happy writer as well there, Peter. I do appreciate that. Um, Peter actually is one of the coaches in both the no pants program and triple point. So if you guys wanted to get more access to Peter, that's available to you as well. That's the kind of caliber of coaches that we have in these programs. Just excellent, excellent people um, who, who provide just a lot of service in our open books. I mean, that's the real thing. Like you'll notice Peter didn't really hold anything back. Totally open. Um, we like to be real and honest and sort of straightforward in, in how we coach people. There's no point in, um, you know, 
fill in anybody's head with anything but the reality because that's that ultimately the market operates on reality. So that's how we have to operate. So thank you, Peter, very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Again, you guys, the No Pants Project is still going to be here. I mean, the happy writer, I almost said the happy writer will not be sold to the public again after Friday night at midnight, the nopantsproject.com forward slash the hyphen happy hyphen writer is where you can get that. Again, I want to say a massive thank you to everybody. For those of you who've been watching us on Facebook and social, I hope that you've enjoyed it as well. And for everyone who is here, um, I will send out the replay link to you as soon as we get it. Lots of stuff to consider. Lots of notes to take. Lots of things to review just in the training today. I hope it was useful. Thank you guys so much. And I will talk to you all later and I'll see you on the interwebs.